they look great. Now, here is it in uh, slow motion. Actually, it's not slow motion. It's just me putting a lot of frames of the same type in between so we don't go so fast through them. I have a video studio, and this is what I do. This is what we were taught to do. Look at that reverse rotation. Actually, I think I have some comments. Maybe I should let it go on to that point before I pause it. Because I'll have all the comments. There we go. <laughs> Notice that the way they taught us is, is to reverse rotate the hips ooh, way around. So actually, the line, so the acetabular line, does that work for you? For the, <laughs> for the hips? I, I, I want to use language that we all understand. That's what I would say. What would you say? Is that all right? Or you want to give me another one? I'll say that. As long as you understand that it's a line that's going through my, my hip sideways. That probably works better. That's the tab line? What, okay. the, what you just said, the line through the That's what I just said. <laughs> okay. But notice that that line's pointing at first base. Holy smokes. Okay. Wow. Way over like that. Now. Um, I think the next thing I talk about, look at what this is doing to the knee. You know, knees weren't meant to move like that. That's just not nice on the knee. And I got the knee replacement to prove it. Yeah, I know. I learned everything the hard way. And I think I... Oh, oh there he is. Knees under, I just point out that knee's under high stress. But if you watch the knee, it's going to go from all this twisting to dropping <laughs> sideways inward like this. See? It's going to come in like this. Now, what does this do to that knee? Well, it compresses the lateral compartment, the lateral meniscus, and it, it uh, lengthens or opens the medial compartment, which means it's lengthening the medial collateral ligament. And on this side, it's tearing up the lateral meniscus and grinding into the bone. And see, I got a nice, really a pretty nice glove knee. But look at the other side. And this was surgically repaired and took away some. It, it turns in like this. And it, when I walk, it drops in. That's from pitching. I didn't used to be that. I used to be fast. I used to have legs that ran well, that were straight. Years of pitching. If you watch a major league pitcher from behind, you know how long he's been pitching by how much the leg, his pitching leg turns out. And he will have to have knee surgery, knee replacement, as I did unless he likes to have the pain and not being able to climb on the step uh, two at a time, go up a ladder one step at a time, and so on. Okay, let me go on. Now, I'm going to show how far, dang, there we are. Okay, pause it. Oh, don't jump around. Stand still. Oh, it's going. Oh, I hit the wrong button, that's why. <laughs> no, it's right. I, I, I'll do the backup thing that okay. you did. Yeah, there you go. Is it doing it? Uh, it says it does. Hit, okay. hit play in it. Got to hit play then do hit it? Hit play in it. Yes. All right. There you go. See, there it goes. Uh, okay, I'll go back a little farther, a little farther, go back a little farther. And now I'm going to hit pause again. Oh, there you go. Hit pause. Good. There you go. <laughs> this, this is working. <laughs> so here we are. That's about three feet behind the body, lateral behind the body. Another critical thing to notice is, notice that the pitching upper arm is at shoulder height, and yet the baseball is at waist height. All right? Um, I can't pitch with the ball down here. I sort of need to have the ball up here. So I got to get from down here to up here. Let's take a look at how we do that, and I think I I put little balls on there, little circles that indicate it. All right, there, there, and I hope oh, right there you can see that my form is, oh, it's, I didn't miss it. I'll stop again. All right, keep pressing that one way. Keep playing, go back. Look, see, this button and this button. I'm hitting this one, I should be hitting this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Well, go back, go back, go back, just a little bit farther. All right, now we'll shut that. There we are. Now, we went from the hand hanging down like this upward to now I have my pitching forearm vertical. Okay. I call that ah, late pitching forearm turnover. That's a name I gave it back in 67. I just made it up. My 
hands here, I gotta turn my forearm over, it's late, too late. And the reason it's late is my glove foot landed. My glove foot landed, my arm is moving upward and backward, my glove foot landed. When your glove foot lands, then you start to forwardly rotate your body. You can't forwardly rotate your body until then. But when that glove foot lands, you're going to start rotating the body. And the first sign that it is, is going to be that this elbow is going to start moving forward. Problem is, the forearm isn't. The forearm is still going to be moving backward. That's going to cause a huge, huge problem. Let's see what happens there. Get my thumb on the right one now this time. There we are. That can cause problems in the hips. All right. Now here we go from that point. Now see that elbow's going, going to go forward? Let's go forward. There it is. There it is. Okay. So it went forward, and then it, you notice the elbow went from over here to about there without the ball moving at all. When you are, when you're doing this, this action, we would call that shoulder joint action outward rotation, external rotation, okay? When you do that, what muscles across the elbow are operating? Well, it's got to be on the lateral surface. These muscles are operating, contracting the, the muscles that are attached to the lateral epicondyle. Certainly, the muscles that attach to the medial epicondyle, coronator teres, flexor carpi radialis, Palmaris longus, flexor carpi ulnaris, and flexor digitorum superficialis, all baseball pitcher needs to know these are the critical elbow pitching muscles. They're not contracting. So you're up here using all the muscles that are on the lateral side with an external or outward rotation. The elbow starts forward, the inertial mass of the, of the forearm and ball here, the elbow's going, and then it gets to a point where it bounces. Reverse pitching forearm bounce. Right there, that elbow bounced. All the stress of the weight of the forearm bounced. But you are contracting the muscles on the lateral aspect of the elbow, not the medial aspect. The ulnar collateral ligament attaches from on the medial aspect of the elbow, holding, and it's a ligament. So it just holds the ulnar bone to the humerus bone. The, primary, uh, the pronator teres muscle overlays the medial side. If it's contracting, that muscle will take all the stress off of the ulnar collateral ligament because that muscle contracts. The ligaments don't contract. So by contracting, you actually are moving, compressing those two bones together. That's what muscles do. They move bones closer together, closer together. Okay. If you don't have those muscles protecting, or contracting, I should say, there's nothing protecting that ulnar collateral ligament. It bounces. That stress causes microscopic tears in the ulnar collateral ligament, the connective tissue of the ulnar collateral ligament. And over a period of years, because it doesn't happen right away, you will fray that ulnar collateral ligament until it ruptures. And then you have Tommy John surgery. You'll have to replace that on a collateral ligament. What do you replace it with? Can you find another ligament to put there? No, the ligaments sort of like to stay where they are. So what they do is they cut the tendon of the palmaris longus muscle, that's that tendon right here, and they thread it through. So you got a tendon replacing a muscle. But worse than that, it's a tendon without any circulatory system supplying it because you weren't born with it there. It's trying to supply it as a palmaris longus muscle. So you have an inert piece of tissue, totally two things together, that you then start tearing the connective tissues over. You always rupture the second one faster than you do the first. Okay. So that's a problem. <clears throat> now let's move on, and we're trying to resolve a question in terms of how, what, what causes uh, cause the problem with my elbow flexion extension. So I'm going to move actually a little faster through this now. I got those points. Okay, there's the release point. To, oh, there's a little, there's a point here I should make. Notice that the pitching upper arm cannot go any higher than the line, than parallel with the line across the top of the shoulders. There's no way you can raise 
Everybody says, I throw up here. No, you don't. You throw here. You get it up there by leaning. Why? Because you're using palmar, I mean the pronate pec I'll get it in a second. Pectoralis major muscle to pull the upper arm forward. You cannot, I mean, how do you raise your, uh, your upper arm from this level to there? What do you do? What do you do? Just, I'm just saying here, I, I raise, you can see that I'm raising the upper arm up. I'm raising my hand in class. I upwardly rotate the scapula. There is no change in the relationship of the, of the, uh, the humerus bone to the scapula. The change is I've rotated the scapula. You can't upwardly rotate the scapula when you're pitching. Because what muscle upper, upper rotates the scapula? The first aspect of trap one, trapezius one, comes down from here, goes up to the end, and that lifts up the, the acromion process. There's no other muscle that does it, and you can't use that muscle when you're using the muscle that is essentially antagonist to it, and that is the pectoralis major. The trapezius is a back of the shoulder muscle, the pectoralis major in front of the chest muscle. They can't co-contract. So when they say he pitches out of this slot or that slot, no, we all pitch out of the same slot. If you're using pectoralis major muscle. There is a way to get away from that uh, that I'm going to show you later on, where you can actually raise it above uh, the line of, that's parallel to the uh, line across the top of the shoulders. All right. Now, let's see if we can move on a little faster. I just wanted to show you this mount of side-to-side -side action, almost six feet of side-to-side -side forces, and then you notice you come right back to the same spot you started because you, you're forming a big circle, and that's called a centripetal imperative. Whatever you do on one side has to be decelerated by doing the same thing on the other side. So there you are looking at that again. Now we're going to see the side view. And this is at 400 frames a second. I don't think we have to spend a lot of time here. I'm going to freeze frame it, I believe. No, we're going to watch them without stopping. So this is just the motion looking real s slow. It's the same pitch taken simultaneously, and there's the release. Now we're going to put it uh, where I'll stop it, but I don't think I'm going to stop stop it myself. We can I'll have enough time. Okay, first thing you're standing tall, starting there. Now look what happens uh, as you pitch. You know, here's, here's the re pointing toward first base, the acetabular line. If you look at the acromial line from the two acromial processes, it's not as far as the hip in the reverse rotation, but still it's considerably beyond second base. I'm sorry, sir. The head drops two feet. Forward hip rotation is, is going on now. The pitch arm swings toward first base, not toward second base, toward first base. Now, uh, pitch upper arm is uh, at shoulder height. Here comes the late pitching forearm turnover. There's the glove foot landing. I think I will stop it here for a second. Glove foot landing, stop. Okay. We saw the leg lift. We saw the stride. How fast is the baseball moving forward after you use the leg lift and the stride? Well, let's see. The glove foot is landed. Now let's see how fast that ball is moving as he's as I start to. Uh, pull the upper arm forward. Uh, now the elbow starts forward. Okay. The ball there. Now watch. There. Now watch. It drops down and there. See how it came to a complete stop? Once it stopped, any force that was generated by anything prior to that is of no use. The legs do not apply any force to the baseball. There is no kinetic chain in a high leg lift or a long stride. It does nothing to increase the release velocity of the baseball. Now is when you start accelerating the baseball. And this is what I call the maximum pitching form acceleration position. That's when the pitching forearm lays horizontally behind the elbow. Okay, right now is when the acceleration of the traditional baseball pitching motion starts. Here is the pitching rubber. Here is where it starts. Acceleration does not start until you're almost three and a half feet from the pitching rubber. 
Are you saying all the muscles used to throw the